I have 15 graphic design trends that you should know about or at least consider for 2024. Plus, I have a bonus trend that I think is picking up quite nicely that you should know about, and I'll share that at the end along with five super important tips you need to keep in mind when thinking about graphic design trends, especially when it comes to consumer trends versus design trends just for the sake of designing. So let's dive in. First up is abstract shape masks, or really just abstract shapes in general. What we've been seeing is a lot of photography masked inside these shapes to give social posts or flyers or even merch an intricate or cut look. Sometimes this will be organic looking masks, other times this might be more geometric and straight. I can see the ideal use case being social media posts, poster designs, album cover art, or even book covers. The nice thing about this masking technique is that it can easily be applied across a lot of different design styles like retro, elegant, maximalist, and many more. And lucky for you, we already have a ton of these abstract shape masks in Kittle, easily ready for you to drag over and put your image in in just a second. Our next trend is more of a movement than it is a design style, and that is the eco-friendly or organic style design trend, specifically catered towards brands and companies that value preservation initiatives like saving the forest, cleaning up the ocean, protecting our wildlife, and valuing recycling or saving natural resources. What you'll notice about this style is the jagged or rugged typography mixed with organic shapes that are rather simple, paired with color palettes that match, i.e. greens, tans, browns, blues, and other colors that make sense in nature. I think the main use case for this style is definitely logo and packaging design as more businesses are becoming more aware of the type of materials they are using and taking the opportunity to raise awareness on issues like this which in turn builds more customer loyalty. So that being said, you'll need to think about if a design style like that actually fits your brief and fits in with the values of the company. And again, lucky for you, we already have a ton of templates just like this in Kittle that are ready for you to click in and edit in just a few seconds, which can also be super helpful if you're trying to make eco-friendly t-shirts for something like print on demand. Our next trend has been on the rise for a while, and that is maximalist design. Now, I think there are a lot of subsets to this design, and we could dive into like brutalism or anti-design, which in my opinion, fit right in the category of maximalist. The main use cases we've seen for this trend are poster designs, streetwear apparel like t-shirts and hoodies, and even certain web design elements and social posts. We are seeing a resurgence of design that goes against normal conventions. What's interesting about this is if you look closely at all of these designs, they follow the same sort of pattern or grid structure. And it's an overwhelming one for sure, but the main thought behind this is less about being legible and more about catching attention to draw a viewer in to see what's happening. Now, you might look at a poster like this and think, wow, that can really only be done in Photoshop because look at all of those layers and the textures and the scribbles and all of that stuff. Nope, you can do it right in Kittle. And we actually have a ton of designs just like the ones I've already been showing you, which you can edit in Kittle. Our next trend has got to be one of my favorites and that is trippy or liquefied fonts. What we're able to do with Type Today and making fonts is truly amazing. The use cases for this type of font would be merch design on a major scale or maybe brand elements or packaging, poster design, social media posts, and honestly, so much more. What's really cool about this style is that you can utilize it with a bunch of other design niches like retro, minimal, or even the organic trend that we were talking about just a minute ago. And where would you find fonts like this? Well, you can find them in Kittle. We already have ones that are exactly like the style you've been seeing, whether it's liquidy or psychedelic or wavy or bubbly, whatever you want to use, it's ready for you to use in Kittle. Our next design trend is another personal favorite of mine, and that's pixel art or pixelated icons. Now, of course, this trend is super popular in video games, but just think about the sheer amount of sticker designs or pins you can make for a specific niche, whether that's something like Dungeons and Dragons, or maybe it's a video game from way back in time that you know has a following and is super nostalgic. The opportunity for using pixelated icons in art is super high. We're also seeing pixel icons used for badges and rewards on streaming platforms platforms like Twitch, and people are also using them as avatars on social media or gaming consoles. You could also use them as spot elements in title and poster design. 
The next trend that is definitely on the rise is the use of muted or pastel color palettes. Think of your dark fall colors, tan, or your retro muted purples and blues mixed with white. There is an endless amount of projects and reasons you would want to use a muted color palette, but we've seen a lot of brands utilizing these colors for packaging designs, social media posts, as well as poster and event flyers. A lot of earthy tones or muted tones can help you achieve a retro or vintagey look while still looking and feeling modern with the use of bold typography. The next trend has a name that I bet you've been trying to figure out what to type in to find it, and we're calling it kitschy retro design. The best way that I can describe this trend is somewhere between like an 80s retro and a brutalist approach. This design trend is great for sticker designs, fun branding elements and campaigns, even flyers and posters, or maybe even quirky web design, and it's definitely perfect for social media posts. It's quite brilliant bringing both neo retro style and modern aesthetics together, utilizing these muted but vibrant color palettes of pink blue, purple, and brown mixed with bold, fun typography. Another revived design style coming up is nostalgic editorial design. The actual ads from the 80s might be some of the best and clever pieces that I've ever seen. Mixing elegant serif typography with a big product cutout brings back the nostalgic feeling from seeing a car ad or maybe an alcohol of spirits ad or maybe a watch ad. Use cases for this style are product marketing, social media posts, web design, and of course, posters and event flyers. Like I said before, this style really reaches back and pulls on your strings, pulls on your emotions from what you saw back in the day, unless, you know, you're super young or something like that. But a lot of brands are actually starting to implement this style into their advertising like campaigns or different social posts and things like that. Our next trend should not come as a surprise as we've seen more and more use of retro mascot illustrations. What was once very popular during the 50s and 60s has made its way to be a staple in a lot of logo design, branding, and merch design. The use cases for retro mascots are generally more evergreen, which is a good thing for you because the style is perfect for stickers, merch, poster design, inspirational apparel like tote bags and banners, and we've even seen more brands starting to implement this style into their packaging, like for pizza boxes, t-shirts, mailers, stickers, magnets, and more. Truly, this design style is great for everything from personal use to local businesses and even corporate company use. And again, you're super lucky because we have a ton of retro mascot illustrations in Kittle ready for you to use, and we also have about 10 different videos on how to use them. And if you don't like them, you can just make your own with all of our eyes, legs, arms, shapes to build your own custom retro mascot. So let's move on to our 10th design trend, which is Y2K. Y2K started booming around the end of 2021. And once this happened, we started to investigate what the use cases of the Y2K trend would be. We noticed a lot of people were using this style for streetwear brands, as well as other elements for their brand, like stickers and of course, different merch. I mean, just look at the sheer amount of templates that we have in Kittle right now for Y2K. Now, as of late, the use cases for Y2K design have been a bit more refined and a little bit more practical, such as packaging or branding, which leans a little bit more into the bubble look, less of the futuristic look. And Y2K isn't just about blocky, sharp fonts or the bubble letters, although I know that's what you're seeing. Newer and younger brands are starting to incorporate this style onto their actual products, which of course need to be legible. Our next trend is in the category of the overarching retro style, and that's neo-brutalism. In fact, this might have been another trend you've been trying to put a name to, and so hopefully what you're about to see brings some thoughts to your mind. Emerging from UI and UX design, we have a trend design style that utilizes unusual or out of the ordinary background colors mixed with bold modern typography in tandem with what one might consider as pretty ugly design elements. But we're going to go ahead and call these spot elements, you know, like those sort of comic book action bubbles that have sharp drop shadow. In fact, this design style is pretty comic book looking minus the half tones and the shading. In addition to some trendy web design, neo brutalism is being used for branding purposes like package design, social media posts and and even animation. These spot elements mixed with bold type really make some cool, easy to make animated effects. Next, we have the grunge design trend, and you can pretty much add grunge to anything and it looks pretty awesome, right? Well, for this trend specifically, 
lately, we're noticing more of a displacement, almost ink stamped effect for illustrations, typography, and icons that capitalize on making the design look like it's on a specific type of paper. Essentially, we're seeing a really cool bleed effect. Use cases for this design style, it's pretty far reaching. I could see this being used for merch design, like a big, nice design on the back of a t-shirt, poster designs, and even flyers, or certain packaging designs, since that bleed effect will look super cool on actual cardboard or other box design. And again, lucky for you, we have a lot of fonts that already have this kind of displaced ink effect, as well as some other illustrations, and of course the textures, which you can alpha mask to cut out parts of the background to make it look like it's stamped on paper. Another personal favorite of mine is minimal utilitarian design. Now, don't let the word minimal here fool you because there's still a lot going on. I want you to think of a really trendy, well laid out packaging label because that's kind of what this trend reminds me of. You'll notice we're pretty much staying to black and white hence the minimal part of this design. And then we have photography or iconography that matches the bold geometric typography. It should remind you a lot of architecture, how every little piece fits together in the design so well. Use cases for this trend is first and foremost presentation decks and website design. There's almost no better way to get your point across than this super clear style. But you could also utilize this style in your event flyers and of course packaging and packing labels that will set your brand just apart from the rest. Art Deco is our next design trend and Art Deco has been around for a while as this dates back around the 1920s and a lot of people refer to this trend as the Gatsby trend or the Great Gatsby trend because again that's what it looked like back in the 1920s. We're seeing more and more thin gold framing with geometric sans serif type or maybe streamline type is another word that comes to mind and the use cases for this design style are labels, wedding and invitation cards, cocktail menus, and even just branding for bars and restaurants in general. I love me a good speakeasy. Pretty much everyone I have gone to has some sort of branding just like this. Our 15th trend is vintage medieval and gothic typography. Now I know what you're thinking, what would I even use this for? Well, more and more people are starting to utilize this black letter and gothic style into their streetwear designs, title designs, album covers, and even certain print materials like catalogs and magazine covers. It truly stands out from everything because of how intricate and loud the letters are. And that's something to keep in mind as you use this trend as the type really speaks for itself here and doesn't need a ton of additional layering to make it good. Maybe that's why we've seen a massive spike for people searching for black letter fonts. And lucky for you, we have a ton in Kittle ready for you to use. And I just did a video, which you can see here, showing you my top five favorites. So definitely check that out. All right, so my bonus trend for you is one that I have seen used pretty sparsely over the last year, but I think it's about to pick up, and that is bohemian and mystic style design. You know what I'm talking about. Organic looking illustrations and shapes, psychedelic typography, earthy color tones, and all of this has a pretty deep spiritual and wellness aesthetic to it. Which is why you see a lot of yoga or essential oil or candle brands utilizing this type of style. It also has a very home crafts look to it because of the type, which is something to keep in mind. I should also mention that the tarot card look and feel is making a big swing over the last few months and might be a good idea to implement into your t-shirt designs and other print-on-demand products if you're in the POD game. Now there are five important tips that I want you to keep in mind when it comes to graphic design trends. First, that there is a big difference between consumer trends and graphic design trends just for the sake of being designy. I did my best to research design trends that cover both but mostly for the consumer-based design trends, things that people would want to buy on a product, or perhaps for startups that are looking for a designer to brand them because they are starting up and they need design work for their packaging or their logo design. Second, please keep in mind your intended audience for your design project. Let's say it's a big branding project for a middle-aged women's club that plays pickleball on Wednesday afternoons. You're probably not going to use the black letter or the medieval fonts for that branding project. So don't just use a trend for the sake of using a trend, make sure that it works with your brief. Third, think about whether or not you're designing for digital or physical use for a physical product or physical entity. Some of these design styles work best for one and some work perfectly for both. So if you're designing a website and your client brief matches the minimal utilitarian design, that could be one that you can incorporate into your web design versus something like using the Art Deco style to make a website. But if you're designing a wedding invitation, then perhaps 
perhaps utilize the Art Deco style as that makes a lot more sense for that use case. Fourth, make sure you don't put all of your faith into design trends, as they are, after all, just trends that may come and go and some may stay evergreen for a while. Make sure that you do your research and use data to figure out what's really working, look at your competition or other shops that are doing something similar to you so that you make sure that you fit in with what consumers are looking for. Perhaps try to utilize one of these design trends with another niche or another style to make something new. And fifth and finally, use Kittle to make all of your designs because we have pretty much everything you need, everything that I described in this video, we've got it all for you to use from fonts, illustrations, textures, layers, a vectorizer, you can remove your background, everything that you need to achieve this look and feel, you can do in Kittle, which you can sign up to try for free using the link down in the description. And before you go, do me a quick favor and hit the thumbs up button. And what I believe is not red anymore, the black subscribe button, do me a favor and hit that, it helps us out a ton and let us know down in the comments what video you want to see next. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.